Hello, Chris Sexton with Team Synergy here. I'm going to do a real quick video on the new Castle Telemetry Link for Fataba S-Bus. Um, there have been a couple of videos about these out there. We're going to run through real quick um, the uh, process necessary to set up the speed controller for it. We're going to um, use my Castle Link to update the software on this Castle Link, on the Telemetry Link itself. Make sure the speed controller is up to date on the current firmware. And then I'm also going to do show you how to set up the sensors on my Fataba 18SZ. It's going to be a real quick and dirty video I'm shooting with my cell phone. I uh, just want to show you guys how easy this is. Okay, real quick, a couple things you have to have to make the telemetry link work. Uh, there are two versions of the telemetry link available. Uh, this is the S-Bus 2 version for Fataba. There is a newly released version for Spectrum. Uh, I've got some questions if it's going to be available on DS. DMSS and other systems, I honestly don't know. That's a question for Castle. To make it work the Fataba system, you have to have one of the new fastest uh, telemetry enabled uh, receivers, as well as a fastest compatible telemetry uh, radio. The 14SG, 18SZ, and 18MZ, uh, all three are compatible that I know of. Um, also, if you don't want the big bulky eight channel version like I have here, there is a three channel version available, the 7003 SB, that will give you a smaller, more compact option for those of you who are accustomed to using the uh, 6303s and whatnot. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to make, uh, out of these receivers out of the box come in, in uh, mode A or mode one, which um, only has one of the SBUS ports turned on to be able to use SBUS with my fly barless system and then SBUS 2 for the telemetry, I have to set this receiver to mode B. Uh, that's actually not a very difficult process. Uh, it just requires a battery and one of the trusty Fataba pokers. And what you do is on the end of this receiver is a little button right here. Uh, you press and hold that button, power up the, the battery and then you're going to put the radio into um, a menu. Let me uh, move some things around. I'll show you what that menu looks like. All right, as you can see, I've got my receiver um, turned on. I turned it on while holding the button. That's really hard to do and hold the camera at the same time. So um, as you can see, I'm in programming mode. I have a single strobe on this LED. That means I'm in mode one. To change my receiver to mode two, I got to push this button again. And now you can see I got two flashes. This now telling me that the receiver is in mode two. I need to push and hold this button for up to two seconds. As soon as the light goes green, I am now done, powered down, and this receiver is now ready for telemetry. All right, let's take a quick second look at the Castle Link itself. Um, this little telemetry link, it consists of, oh, overall, I'd say it's about four and a half, maybe five inches long. Uh, on one end, you have the control board itself uh, with a male connector that goes into the throttle lead on the uh, speed controller. Then you have two, um, female leads come out the other side. Uh, now these are color coded for a reason. Now they are labeled. You can read these little labels and I'll tell you. But the um, easy thing to keep in mind is Castle has always used these uh, brown, red, and orange or brown, red, and yellow color patterns for the throttle. So they stuck to that. So this, this brown, red, and yellow lead goes into the uh, throttle portion or the external input side of your speed of your receiver or gyro and this new white red and black that is your s bus 2 plug that goes into the s bus 2 port on the receiver uh, pretty simple the nice thing about this is because it uh, does add some length to the wires a, a lot of helicopters you do need to add some extensions to make the speed controller uh, leads and reach the back of the heli uh, I was able to eliminate two extensions from my helicopter by putting this on my 766. That's really nice. Um, the next thing we're going to do is since I already know um, that the Castle Link telemetry link has a firmware update, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my Castle, uh, Castle Link and my tablet and uh, update the firmware and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, I have my telemetry link set up. Uh, first things first, to get into the settings and firmware update for the telemetry link itself you must connect it to the castle link without the speed controller connected otherwise it just does a pass through and you get the firmware for the speed controller it's a very nice thing and this is all wired up in your helicopter you can use this um, as the 
uh, castle link Y, you don't have to um, have extra wires there, which is I think is nice. Um, I am still using the old school portable programming card. The small USB, um, more modern cast links do work, no problem. Uh, because this is capable of pulling power, I didn't have to hook up any battery sources. The field programmer powered it up. You can see a good green light. And my computer is telling me, as soon as I powered it up with the most recent version of the Castle Link software, version 6. Point, excuse me, version 3.63, 3, uh, it's telling me right away there's a new version of the firmware. And we're going to let that update because there's some... I like having the most recent versions. So software and firmware update. Now this is going to tell me you do not want to disconnect power. While it's updating, you could possibly brick the device. Let that go, it just takes a quick second. Yeah, almost done. All right, so now my telemetry link is up to date with the most current firmware. On the basic tab, you do have some options. Um, it, the You can have the option of changing what the throttle channel, the telemetry system is looking at. Uh, if you've remapped your throttle to a different channel for any number of reasons, retracts, uh, maybe you want to use uh, channel 3 to control governor gain for the castle gov inside the radio, whatever. Um, just make sure that the throttle input matches the channel you're in your system. 3 is the default channel for Fataba. Um, by default, the, uh, the sensors occupy banks uh, slots 8 through 15. There's really no reason to change that, but you can. And these are all the things that are capable of being outputted. Now, what options are available to you, what it's actually able to send forward, varies from speed controller to speed controller. You're going to want to uh, reference the uh, owner's manual on what your speed controller is capable of doing. I am using, for this, this test, a Phoenix Edge 100 with an internal BEC. So I will be able to get all of these fields into my radio. It's going to be, you'll be able to see the BEC voltage, uh, the voltage of the system, battery ripple, controller temperature, all of it. It's going to be really nice. Um, basically, I'm not changing anything here. I'm leaving everything turned on, but I'm still going to press update just to be sure that the system knows I want everything. And that's it. The telemetry link is now updated. Okay, as you can see, I now have my Castle Edge 100 hooked up to my Castle Link, and I've got the software. This unit already has the most current firmware on it, so that's good. A uh, couple of things. Um, using the telemetry link does not mean you have to use the Castle Governor. Uh, you still have full control of the auxiliary wire. You can set that to RPM out, put the throttle setup in external governor mode, and that, fun that part of it won't function at all. The only thing that's really necessary in the ESC for the telemetry to work is you have to turn on Live Link. If that's not on, uh, you're not going to actually see that data trans um, travel through the, the Castle Link. Now, I'm not going to go into the full setup to the speed controller. There's lots of videos out there for that. Uh, I'm gonna. I just wanted to show you that the Live. They have to have the newest firmware, uh, 4.22, and the Live. Uh, link live enabled it needs to be turned on. So now I'm going to cut the camera and I'm going to do a little pre-wiring on the table here and um, show you what it looks like wired up. Okay, so as you can see, I've got things prelim to, uh, preliminarily laid out. Speed controller is over here. I've got the throttle lead going into the castle link, into the telemetry link rather. I have the white signal lead for the S bus 2 connection going into the S bus 2 port on the 7008 receivers. That's the flat port on the bottom. And then I don't have any motors hooked up. There's really no need, but I wanted to make sure I was getting BEC power to the receiver. So I went ahead and plugged the throttle lead into channel three. Um, again, there's no motor hooked up. We're not actually gonna spin anything up. Um, so uh, that's not necessary, but just wanted to ensure we got BEC power. Uh, the next thing you have to do is I went into my model and I created a new, uh, in my new, in my radio, created a new model. Uh, you do have to have the, um, the radio system set to one of the fastest modes, either uh, 12 channel or 18 channel. Fast multi, fast seven channel, and FHSS do not support the telemetry here. So you do need um, the fastest uh, options. Um, important to note, this is a brand new receiver. I'm just doing some bench testing for this. So nothing is already linked. But uh, if I were enabling these functions on the 
on an existing system. Uh, after you make that change to mode two on the receiver and connect the telemetry link, you do need to re-link the radio to the receiver uh, for it to see those extra um, telemetry sensors. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and I got a battery sitting here. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to initiate a link on my radio and now I have to connect the power and you'll notice now I have a link established on the radio I have my radio ID and you can see here on the main screen if I can get my finger to work I'm now seeing uh, receiver voltage I have now successfully linked this uh, I'm going to stop the camera and reposition things so you can see the uh, radio and I'm going to take you through how to set up the sensors. Okay, real quick, I'm going to run you through the menus on the Fataba 18SZ, um, show you where to find the sensor configs and uh, the registration. Uh, after that, I'm going to stop, break my 766 out and show you live data coming out of an actual speed controller hooked up to a helicopter. Um, since this is a brand new model, my radio has never had any kind of telemetry setup before. Uh, we need to go into the linkage menu. And then the bottom right corner here on page one is sensor. These are all of the sensor channels that are available. Uh, by default, um, we left the telemetry link on channels eight through 12, on slots eight through 12 rather, if you remember from the telemetry link setup. So I'm gonna go to eight. And that's going to give me all the option, all the sensors that this firmware is capable of reading. You'll notice if you are running the newest firmware on the 14SZ, you now have the Castle TLO option. Now, as soon as you select that, it does occupy 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 slots automatically. You don't have to go in and program all 12 slots. It does it for you. Now that you've told the system that those slots are in use by the TLO, um, it will know how to read them and you'll be able to find them on page two under telemetry. Um, the TLO telemetry settings, and I'm gonna adjust my camera here so I can see the. On page two, the TLO options are here. Click that, and this is gonna show you all of the um, sensors that are coming out, all the data rather, coming out of the speed controller. Now this actual speed controller is not hooked up to a helicopter, it's not fully programmed, so I can't show you live data. So I'm gonna cut, get my 766 out, power it up on the table, and show you some live data. Right, here we go, as you can see I have my radio set up with my 766. Uh, this guy is completely wired up, my CGY 750. On this model I am using the Castle Governor with my Castle 160. Uh, the RPM wire is not in use, so I have it capped off and shrunk up out of the way. Auxiliary wire turned off in the Castle software. Uh, it's just in place there. If I ever want to use the eGov, I can. Just got to you know, connect into this jumper, into this extension, and go about life. Uh, the telemetry link is wired up in line with my throttle lead. Like I said, I was able to remove some extensions. My receiver is here. Everything's good to go. Now, this is an actual live model. So if you look at the radio, you can actually see I have RX voltage. Now this model has a BEC um, external. The, as you know, the, the high volt edges do not have an internal BEC. Um, so I don't have, um, not really true BEC uh, receiver voltage, that's BEC voltage. If I click my home button, you can see the live data that I have chosen to be on my shortcut menu. I have the uh, pack voltage. Uh, this is a, um, uh, 12 volt system, so as you can tell, that's not a fully charged battery. It's in storage mode. Uh, it is sitting here idle and throttle hold on my on my table, so there's no amps being drawn. Uh, voltage ripple is zero right now. I am a speed guy, so I like to keep an eye on the voltage ripple. And then my um, controller temperature is right here in Celsius. Now, you can only have four items that are quick real time monitored like that, but the system is monitoring all eight sockets. If I come back into my linkage menu, come over here to page two. Now I know it's hard to see on the telemetry. I can go to page two and then if I click on, I'm gonna get my camera to focus, on the Castle TLO, I can actually see all eight sockets real time. And you'll notice on the left here, it's keeping tracks of your record minimums and maximums. 
So this helicopter has not been actually flown since the last time I reset these mins and maxes, so these are pretty small numbers. But you can actually uh, look at these and historically see what your highest. Oh, I just did a flight. What was my high? What was my peak amps? Um, what was my peak power out? What was my what was my high and low on the battery voltage for for that since the last time this has been reset? Uh, it's really cool. It, it keeps track of those for you. Again. Um, there's nothing here for BEC voltage and current because the Edge 160 does not have an internal BEC. I'm running an external BEC. But my voltage ripple is here. And as you can see, um, I promise you that is an error just from a posting issue. I just need to reset that one. And now that's my new min and max um, record high there. So you can come in here and review the data after the fact um, in all eight sockets, but you can only real-time preview like leave this screen open while you're flying on these four uh, you can also trigger alarms on these you can trigger uh, te speech telemetry upon uh, upon at least telemetry options the 18 sd has some cool stuff there um, that's pretty much it i just want to show you uh, the rough rough way of hooking the system up uh, the connecting the sensors um, the thing I struggled the most with uh, was forgetting to relink the receiver. Uh, this helicopter has had a lot of flights on it before I went telemetry link, so I forgot that after changing the modes in the receiver, I had to relink. That caused me some headaches, so don't miss that step. Um, but it's actually pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. It took I spent more time cleaning up the wiring and making it look pretty uh, than actually programming. It's pretty straightforward. Well,